So in expressing my gratitude, I want to substantiate why I began by saying it can be done. Uruguay was able to confront one of the most powerful tobacco companies in the world, one of the world's most powerful transnational corporations. Despite this, we're working with reason, with arguments, but of, above all with principles and defending the fundamental right that we human beings have, the, fight to li the right to life, the right to health, Uruguay achieved a historical milestone, which I believe we must know how to work with and take advantage of to continue advancing in the fight against tobacco, which in fact is a pandemic. Even in the context of the coronavirus, tobacco is the great pandemic, a great pandemic that kills people the most, the one that makes people sick all over the globe, the one that causes disabilities and the one that creates serious and severe economic disorders, not only at the level of nations, but also at the level of families. My first point is that the results we obtained in Uruguay through our fight against tobacco, which was also an internal battle in our country, was thanks to victories over three or four lawsuits launched against us by the tobacco companies' branches at the national level. Although it is too early to measure favorable results in oncological terms, in cardiovascular terms, we did obtain a clear improvement as measured by PAHO when it relates to acute myocardial infraction, especially affecting young people and men. This is encouraging. It is very encouraging, but we were not exempt of collateral pressures coming from the tobacco industry and their efforts to introduce, for example, the consumption of electronic tobacco or electronic cigarettes or pretending, pretending like a song of sirens that tobacco companies are working to produce improved tobacco products better than the previous ones. The first reflection then is, we can make change happen. Let's work, let's seek to advance on these issues and let's not be tempted by their illusions because when you look at it closely, all they aim for is to restore their business and make profit. Of course, is the reason why these tobacco industries were created, created in the first place. Secondly, perhaps more at the international level, the lawsuit we won at ICSID allowed to include a key clause in the investment protection treaties between countries, whether bilateral or multilateral, a clause that clearly establishes the exclusion within these investment protection mechanisms of investments that at any stage of the production process, threaten and damages the health and life of our people. This seems to me to be one of the most important achievements of the policy we pursued. And thirdly, and finally, we became aware that those of us who work on this issue, that those of us who are convinced that what we are doing is right, that is defending the life and health of our people, that we need to unite. Yes, organized civil society is a great strength in the implementation of the framework convention tobacco control policies and the fight against the tobacco industry's interference should not be the exclusive task of the government in power and of academia and the scientific world, although they have a role to play, but it should also rely on the invaluable contribution of organized civil society, which is key in this very novel fight which must be taken to its ultimate consequences. 
Therefore, while thanking you again for the opportunity to participate to the discussion, I would like to end my intervention with the same message I began with. It can be done. Of course, it can be done.